We ain't talking about me. We're talking about you. Because I ain't having it, bruh. No way. No how. Ah, uh, youngster. <laughs> Mom! That's right. That's right. Call for your mama. I see a scared little chocolate bitch. What's up, guys? Boy, Benny. I am not a neocon. I am super anti-war. I do not like American interventionism. American interventionism only benefits the elites and destroys the working class and harms them while killing their children in far off lands and deserts. And so it is an awful, awful way to use American resources. I am anti-war. However, there is one foreign war that I may be in favor of. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been convinced actually by Tucker Carlson that perhaps we should just invade Canada. I mean, why should we stand back and let our biggest trading partner, the country with which we share the longest border, and actually, I could just say a great country. I love Canada. I've always loved Canada because of its natural beauty. Why should we let it become Cuba? Like, why, why don't we liberate it? We're spending all this money to liberate Ukraine from the Russians. Why are we not sending an armed force north to liberate Canada from Trudeau? And I mean it. <laughs> Canada is under the boot heel of despotism. There's no free speech in Canada. Canadian society is collapsing. Nothing is affordable. It is far worse, actually, than what's happening in the States right now. I mean, if you think what's happening here is really bad, check out Canada. I mean, no one can even live. And Justin Trudeau, of course, is rolling out the red carpet for illegal migrants to come pouring into Canada, uh, totally and completely missing the priorities of the people he's elected to represent. And so would invasion of this black face wearing dictator be justified? Well, we might not need it, according to recent polling. Pierre Poiliev would win against Justin Trudeau if election was held now. Canadians tell later latest Abacus poll, some 46% of respondents felt Poiliev would emerge victorious compared to 21% for Justin Trudeau. The conservative party in Canada is absolutely dominating polls. Look at this, just skyrocketing here as Justin Trudeau's fascist liberals, the communist reds, are collapsing. This is demonstrated in new polling that indicates that Trudeau's liberals would drop to third place in parliament, in the parliamentary system, and that 223 seats would go to Poliev. Well, hot Damn, uh, Justin Trudeau, it's hard to really think of a leader who has uh, destroyed his country more and has botched a good thing that was given to him. Uh, also, Trudeau has been in charge of Canada for a very long time, right? He's had a long time to fix things or a long time to screw things up. Latest advocates poll mapped out uh, conservatives would gain 104 seats, conservative majority, uh, and it looks like it wouldn't even be close. Not even close. Everybody's going conservative, but especially through sort of the heartland of Canada here and in some of these cities that are just unlivable, quite frankly. Uh, the the We, we get a, a clip every single day of how difficult it is to find any housing, but also along with like finding housing, getting buying groceries, like crime has just skyrocketed in Canada. Crime has gone insane in Canada. And so it's pretty awesome to see the nation waking up. We hope this is something that is reflected, obviously, uh, down south here in America. Uh, Justin Trudeau, for for his part, is campaigning against, you guessed it, the man who wishes to invade, Tucker Carlson. My very first call this year was with Volodymyr Zelensky, who wanted to know that Canada still stood with him, that Canadians still stood with him. And I told him, yes, we do. The Canadian government and most of the parties in the House will continue to stand with him. But Pierre Polyev and his conservatives chose to vote against support for Ukraine, calling it a faraway foreign land to appease Putin apologists like Tucker Carlson and those who enable him. Uh, so wait a second. Why is a Canadian dictator campaigning against Tucker Carlson? And better yet, is this the greatest back and forth ever? Here's Tucker Carlson calling Justin Trudeau's office. Thank you for your call. You have reached the media line. For all urgent requests, please send your request by email. 
Merci pour votre appel. Vous avez atteint la ligne médiatique. Merci beaucoup. Yes, I, I couldn't understand the French part, but it's Tucker Carlson calling from the United States. And I'd be grateful if you pass a message on to the Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. We are coming to liberate Canada. We are coming to liberate Canada. And we'll be there soon. Merci. So this is what Tucker Carlson said, and he delivered. This is not a major sporting event, although it is inside of a sporting arena. This is the crowd to hear Tucker Carlson in Canada. Holy moly. Tucker just pulled more people into Edmonton Stadium than have ever showed up for a Trudeau rally in his entire career. And Tucker Carlson, of course, went directly at Justin Trudeau in these comments. Listen to the crowd roar when Tucker Carlson talks about Justin Trudeau's true father. <laughs> Go to Canadian Tire for an hour. Uh, Justin, can you watch my kids? <laughs> I don't think you're going to do that. But you hit him your country. It's totally cool. Don't worry. He's a good steward. Um, but he will collapse under the weight of his own ludicrousness and go back to Cuba or do whatever he does. <laughs> but, but, you know, I don't know if that's true or not, but it's just too great to check. Though <laughs> so if I ever meet him, I'm going to demand a 23 in me, like right away. Uh, <laughs> Look at the crowds. Look at the crowds. In case you're wondering if populism is popular, look at this from Tucker Carlson in Canada. Somebody who's not running for office, somebody who's not an elected official. And crowds like that are also cheering against Justin Trudeau for a very different event, but also a knockout event, the UFC, where crowds broke into F Trudeau. F Trudeau. Ahead of Sean Strickland's fight, in Toronto, Canada. So at this packed arena, uh, people were saying, yeah, see ya. And Toronto is like the big liberal epicenter of Canada, the biggest city in Canada. You're a weak effing man. You're the effing problem. You elected Justin Trudeau, uh, Sean Strickland said during a press conference. And Joe Rogan agrees. Look at that. Everyone chanting F Justin Trudeau. <laughs> Trudeau. Yell, Trudeau. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. That guy's Canada. A piece of shit. Get your shit together. Come back. Come back to what you used to be. So I find it very interesting that the uh, UFC crowd is chanting against Justin Trudeau. They have a lot to chant against. Obviously, Justin Trudeau and his son here have never been to a UFC match and would not be not be very good at combat, it looks like, themselves. They're instead at a Barbie movie, wearing skin-tight pink outfits and Justin Trudeau with a really creepy, weird scar on his head. Like, what the hell is this from? What's going on with Justin Trudeau? What are you doing? Why do you have a massive gouge out of the middle of your head? What happened? Aren't you like the leader of a G20 nation? Shouldn't you have security or something? What's going on, dude? Who's unhappy with you? Maybe these massive scars on Justin Trudeau's face is why he wore blackface. Going to be harder to see his scars in this ensemble. Note that Justin Trudeau painted his whole body black, his hand black, then used it to choke a woman, kind of. There's your prime minister, Canada. I mean, we don't have much to talk about. Uh, we don't have much room to talk down here in the States since Joe Biden is the resident of the White House. But like, my God, you know, come on. Justin Trudeau uh, dressing like somebody that Joe Biden would certainly want to put in prison with his 94 crime bill. Justin Trudeau's here with the black hand. And he was asked this uh, in a Q&A, getting sort of a black eye from these little kids who went up to Justin Trudeau in this super undervalued clip. One of the best clips ever, okay? Underrated clip of all time. When two little black girls got up and asked Justin Trudeau, uh, why'd you do that? All right, I'm gonna stand up and ask a question. Why did you paint your face brown? Ooh, um, it was something I shouldn't have done because it hurt people. Um, it's not something that uh, you, you should do. Uh, and that is something that I learned. 
I didn't know it back then, but I know it now. And I'm sorry I hurt people. But did you pick your note in your hands, Ben? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was the wrong thing to do. Did you paint your face and your hands brown? Why did you do it? It's really embarrassing. What's going to be embarrassing is going to be watching the election results in Canada. Uh, Justin Trudeau is such a disgrace and a laughing stock. Greg Gutfeld said Justin Trudeau couldn't be red in the face because he was black in the face. Oh, yeah. Apparently, unvaxxed truckers are treated worse than Nazis. Justin Trudeau is a fascist. We're very much looking forward to Pierre Poliev taking control. And we love this guy's style. This is the clip that uh, sort of alerted us to uh, what a what a what a king this dude is. Uh, the famous Apple clip. If you've never heard of him, he's going to be the next prime minister of Canada, and he's going to come in with a commanding majority. And I think he's going to fix a lot of things. And he has he has that swagger. Not ex not like not like exactly Donald Trump, but a very different style, but like the same results. Check out this liberal reporter doing his best to try and interrogate this man and getting just completely, completely bodied. Um, on the on the topic, I mean, in terms of your sort of strategy currently, you're obviously taking the populist uh, pathway. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> well, ap appealing appealing to people's uh, more emotional levels, I would guess. Um, I mean, what certainly, you mean certainly, you, me certainly you tap, certainly you tap uh, very strong ideological language quite frequently. Like what? Uh, left wing, you know, this and that. Right wing, they, you know. I mean, it's that that type I of ideological never talk thing. About, I never really talk about left but or right. Anyways, a lot I of people don't really believe in that. Okay, a lot of people would would say that you're simply taking a page out of the. Donald Trump. Uh, Probably book. like which people would say that? Well, I'm sure a great many Canadians, but like who? <laughs> I don't know who, but well, you're um, the one who asked the question, so yeah. I, you must know somebody. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm sure there's some out there, but anyways, the, the point of this the point of this question is, I mean, why should why should Canadians trust you with their vote, given you know? Not not just the sort of ideological inclination in terms of taking the page of Donald Trump's book, but what are you also, talking about? What page? What page? Can you give okay. me a page? Give me the page. You keep <laughs> in, saying in that. terms of, in terms of tur turning things quite dramatically in terms of of Trudeau and and the left wing and all of this. I mean, you 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 make quite a you know it's it's quite a play that you make on it. So I'm I'm not just sure. Wondering. I don't under, I don't know what your question okay. is. Okay, then forget that. Why should Canadians trust you with their vote? Common sense. Okay. common sense for for a change we're going to make common sense common in this country we don't have any common sense in the current government you know the guy prints 600 billion dollars grows our money supply by 32 percent in three years that's growing the money eight times faster than the economy no wonder we have the worst infl inflation in four decades i'm going to cap spending cut waste so that we can balance the budget and bring down inflation and interest rates. You'll want to be able to pay your mortgage again. You want to be able to afford rent. Then you have to vote for Pierre Polyev because I'm the only one with a common sense plan that will bring back the buying power of your paycheck. <laughs>